It had been a long, tough case so far, but finally, Spike and I had our man within reach. Salutation, Spike. Spike! You can do it! Just a little while longer! <laughs> Just hang in there, Boss Monkey Man. The fate of an American Eagle family depends on you. <laughs> Say, I know that's mad. <laughs> Not you. Worse. Too stinky for even a flatulent moose. No, what I'm smelling's gotta be... The Griffin! Think, Ace. You've got to make a decision now. Spike's little monkey life depends on it. Hey guys, what is going on? Wizard13 here, and welcome once again to another Let's Play. This is Ace Ventura, Tet Detective. Come I'm going on, to uh, be for quiet for just a little bit longer until we have a moment to breathe because Ace is a mouthy little fucker. But anyway... I think the only way to save Spike All is to use the there. rope. Here. Don't be scared, little eagle nuclear family. Ace is in the place. I think he just killed that person. Alrighty then. <laughs> so, like I was saying, welcome to Let's Play Ace Ventura Pet Detective for Windows 95 slash DOS. I have to admit something. A lot of my comedy, back when I was a ye little wee lad, just a little wee one, just a little wee, just a wee lad, uh, it, it definitely stems a lot from Jim Carrey and the likes of Ace Ventura and The Mask and all that type of stuff. And I thought, what better way for me to celebrate 16-bit winter than to do a 16-bit cartoon amalgamation of Curse of Monkey Island and one of my favorite, like, random Jim Carrey movies of all time. So we are playing, obviously, as Ace Ventura. He is the iteration from the cartoon series, one series that I feel like I may have caught in passing, but I don't think I've ever watched, like, a full episode and slash or an entire season of it. I don't know how long it was on the air. I should probably get some fun facts. Fun facts out there sometime. Uh, but maybe I'll, I'll look it up between parts. But anyway, we need to get ourselves, in true action-adventure style, into our apartment. And clearly, it's most likely locked. So hopefully, yes, good old Ace has got a key to open up the door. Oh, Kaluna. Yes, I know, I know. Moo, moo, moo. But anyway, we are now in Ace's apartment, so let us just sort of walk left and right and sort of look around. These are one of those action adventure games where you just sort of. So that's oh. where I put my electric eel. <laughs> but yeah, this game is surprisingly fully voice acted from from what it sounds like from all the people that are from the series and the guy they have voicing ace high five every once in a while it was sort of a, uh oh what is spike there's someone knocking at the door well first and foremost we don't want him seeing all the animals in our apartment just had this baby installed spike should fool old shicky for a while loser <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's answer. He's probably our Detective landlord. Detective motto number seven. Oh. He who knocks on my door asking for money instead of offering money must be messed with. He's hot. He's bothered. He's shaking hands, 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 hands. Landlord from the bowels of hell. 
And speaking of bowels, how are the old bagpipes? Did I ever mention the bathroom walls are very thin? BMTV presents a very special event. Chicken Ants Unplugged. I want the rent, Ventura, or I'm pulling the plug on you. Obsessing on money just isn't healthy, Mr. Chicken Ants. So just this one month, I'm going to pay the rent in oatmeal cookies. They're high in fiber and may help you with your little problem. Think it over. You're a very sick man, Ventura. Then you better leave before you catch something. Take care now. Bye bye then. <laughs> so, Chicken Ants is the landlord, and obviously, good old Ace. It's tame in here. Oh. Is. Oh. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Ace is kind of a mouthy little fucker, and he's going to talk either over me or I'm going to talk over him throughout this entire deal. But, Chicken Ants, obviously, everybody remembers from hopefully the cartoon and slash or. Uh, the first Ace Ventura, he's the landlord that it seems that Ace seems to be shafting in rent money because he's a pet detective. I'm sure that's a pretty lucrative thing. But as we all know, good old Ace, he is also a vegan. He also believes in no animal cruelty, and I am totally on board with that type of stuff. But before we we head on to our first mission, I think it's fair to say that we should dick around in Ace's apartment just a little bit. Um, I actually don't know some of the stuff. Oh yeah, there's Dan Marino to Ace from Dan Marino. That was a little homage to the first uh, movie. Man, I wish they would make another one. They probably ruined it, kind of like they ruined Zoolander. But that's you know, neither here nor there. Let's pick up the television. The man who brought you Body by Jake. It's the revolutionary new Mind by Jake. I don't know if that TV was supposed to actually show anything, but it didn't. Hello, I'd like to enroll in the Enema of the Month Club. Yes, COD will be fine. Oh, of course I'll pay extra to have a licensed nurse on hand in my home to ensure proper application. My name is Chicken Ants. <laughs> Just a little bit more potty humor coming from Ace. I will state that this game is, if I remember correctly, is pretty lowbrow in its humor. Uh, ex especially likes making fun of poop. A lot of things about poop. I mean, obviously, Chicken Dance apparently can't poop, so Ace was making fun of that. And he just uh, signed up for Enemas of the Month, which is, if you don't know, uh, butt stuff that doctors do. <laughs> well, let's see. Anything yeah, on my notepad? Right. Nope. No. Other parts of this have, like, an like cause obviously Ace has animals and stuff in his apartment. Actually, if you don't lower the projector and you open the door, uh, there's different dialogue between him and Chicken Ants because he figures out and finds out he has animals in an apartment. And long and behold, in most apartments, you're not allowed to have animals. So I think without further ado, I think it is time that we go onto the Compooper. Hey, Manilo, got that info you wanted? Lay it on me, Master Microman. I'm all ears. Uh, here's that story, Manischewitz. Eskimos are reporting the mysterious disappearance of all their sled dogs. A nice case if I've ever heard one, hippie of the microchippy. Let's went. I'm way ahead of you, boss, but there are no ships going to Alaska this week. But I can drop you on an Alaska-bound ship that's already two days out to sea. Just what kind of drop we talking about? Oh, I'm sure you'll find out soon enough, Ace. <laughs> Completely off screen. <laughs> Hey, Spike, either our fall ruptured the time-space continuum, causing us to hurl back in time to the gay 1890s, or that sub is Captain Nemo's hundred-year-old Nautilus. Let's check it out, city monkey. Like I was stating, the guy that voices Ace is actually pretty goddamn fantastic. He sounds almost to a T like Jim Carrey. And obviously Jim was sort of putting on a voice for that role, so it's probably easy to mimic versus like other things. 
But uh, a lot of shows in the 90s, the Ghostbusters excluded, had a lot of, when they had like TV adaptations, they had people that sounded like their movie counterparts, which I thought was really, really good and really, really neat. But anyway, without further ado, let us go into the submarine. That sucker's bolted down. Oh, oh, the submarine. Oh, we have to go to the hatch. My bad. Ah, Spike. Last one ends a rotten egg. And speaking of rotten eggs, are you making whoopee cushion? So it looks like we're in the poop shoot. Ow! And we are now thrust into a mini game that is a lot more difficult than you realize because. As you may be wondering, well, how am I playing a game from when the Windows 95 era on my Windows 10 computer? And that's because I am using a DOS box. I'm using sort of an emulating software that sort of emulates DOS. Problem is, is, um, well, yeah, it's, the frame rate sometimes decides to take a gigantic dump. Though, according to this, I haven't lost, God damn it. <laughs> Uh, I haven't lost any frames, or it hasn't skipped any frames, so maybe this game was always just this laggy, and I never realized it when I was a kid. I guess it's one of those things where you just sort of realize from when you were younger, or like when you had a computer for so long, is you don't really realize on how, like, I have no idea how I dodged any of that. Jesus. Trust me, this is kind of scary on how fast I'm moving. All right, we did it. We didn't die. Woo! Do not, and I mean not in the worst possible way, go in there. Never, ever, ever, ever! Now let's run silent, but whatever you do, don't run silent but deadly. All right, so I don't know how many poop jokes that has been, but we've had quite a lot of poop jokes <laughs> thus far. But anyway, let us head into the ship. Oh, no. Well, that, that's how unfortunate. How did you find us? Ah, out of the poop chute and into the fire. Next time, we don't leave home without pine-scented air freshener. It looks like we have been captured. I, Jean de Manquet, am the only man worthy to succeed Nemo as captain of the Nautilus. Every creature in the deep will soon be my slave, and I will rule them with an iron fist. So it looks as if we have been captured by Jacques. Uh, I would assume he's probably one of the villains from the TV show. I just love how smug Ace looks <laughs> throughout this entire thing. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next part. And uh, hopefully we can escape Jacques' evil um, submarine from Captain Nemo, I think. I think that's what we're going for. All right, whatever. Take care, guys, and stay frosty.